Today, I'm going to show you four easy steps to apply cologne, helpful tips to avoid wasting money, top fragrance recommendations, mistakes to avoid, including this one storage mistake that you may be making right now that's ruining your fragrances as we speak. And we're going to discuss why you should consider wearing your fragrance. Step number one, take a shower. A shower will not only make your skin glow, but it also opens up your pores and gets your skin ready to receive the fragrance. In addition, showers improve your mental, physical, and emotional health by relieving stress and headaches, improving circulation, and fighting inflammation. All the more reason to hop into that shower. Step number two, apply a fragrance-free lotion or moisturizer to your skin. Fragrance-free lotions and moisturizers won't interfere with the scent profile of your fragrance. The fragrance will bond with the moisturizer and make your fragrance last longer, which reduces the need to reapply sooner. Step three, hold the bottle four to six inches away from the skin and spray both sides of the neck under your ears. Allow this to sit and absorb for a couple of moments. This is layer number one. Step number four is to reapply. You've prepped your skin with the warm shower. You've moisturized your skin with the fragrance-free lotion. You've laid down the foundation with the actual fragrance that you're gonna be wearing for the day. Now step four is locking in those initial sprays. A fragrance is essential to any dapper man's presentation. I received multiple compliments on my fragrances at my son's school, church, work, the men's room, the grocery store. No one can ignore a good fragrance. Now, to be straightforward, over the years of testing, practicing with various brands, concentrations, and techniques, and being a student of fragrances, I've learned that there's a difference between niche and designer. Niche fragrances are fragrances that are produced on a much smaller scale than your typical designer fragrance. Niche fragrances are usually produced by companies that focus exclusively on fragrances. The goal of these companies, quality over quantity. They utilize higher quality materials than most designer fragrance producers and sell their products mostly in their own stores and online. These factors make niche fragrances rare, little known, and more expensive. Designer fragrances are usually produced by well-known name brand companies which sell other products. Instead of fragrances being their main cash cow, fragrances are just one type of product among many. Does this make designer fragrances bad? Of course not. But it does mean that they are mass produced and readily available, making exclusivity nearly impossible. But why? Because everyone knows about it. During college, in my early 20s, I stocked fragrances and cosmetics at a major department store in Southern California. When I tell you that these fragrances are mass produced, I mean these are mass produced. Every day, five days a week, there were shipments of tons of fragrances that came in. The same fragrances. This is a testament to how many guys were buying the same fragrances over and over. Am I knocking it? Of course not. There are some awesome designer fragrances out there, and I'll recommend some later. I'm just trying to illustrate the chasm between the production of niche and designer fragrances. Now, people have their own individual preferences when it comes to applying fragrances, causing nuances, which is perfectly fine. You know, you know whatever works for you. I'm going to share my personal experiences with some of these methods which is why I didn't recommend them previously in my four steps above. Some people prefer to spray the inside of their wrists, which makes sense there's blood flowing there and it will help the fragrance warm up and help create a scent cloud around you. The issue that I've run into is when you hug someone, the fragrances rub off, it's gone. In addition, when you wash your hands, if you wash your hands properly with soap and water, you run the risk of washing some of it off then also. However, before these things happen, if you talk with your hands like I do, you're going to spread your fragrance around like crazy. Another method is spraying your shirt. There's two reasons why I don't recommend doing this. Reason number one, because different fragrances have different colors. For example, the juice in this bottle of Prada Amber for Home is light purple. The juice in this bottle of Darkest Night by Henry Rose is brown. 
imagine spraying that on your white or your cream colored shirt, especially when you've invested in higher quality clothing. You don't want to run the risk of staining your clothes. Reason number two, because it will take several washes or trips to the dry cleaners to get the scent out. So imagine that lingering fragrance smell that set into your fabrics. Then every time you spray new fragrances on top of it, you're compounding the scent profile on top of your fabric. Another thing people like to do is spray their hair. So what to avoid? Scenario one, when you spray the fragrance and then rub it into your skin, you're destroying the scent profile. Fragrances have three stages. The first stage are the top notes. Second stage is the heart or the middle. The third stage is the base. Each stage will have its own unique scent profile. So when you rub the fragrance, you ruin your experience. Congratulations, you've just thrown money down the drain. Yay! Scenario two, when you spray the fragrance and walk into it. Most of it's gonna fall to the ground, not getting onto your skin where it really needs to be. Congratulations, you've thrown money down the drain. Yay! Be aware that some fragrances are stronger than others and require fewer sprays. Example, I own two fragrances that my wife really enjoys on my skin. Both are warm weather fragrances, however one is stronger than the other. The stronger fragrance, the more in your face, bolder fragrance is this one. 212 Men by Carolina Herrera. This is a citrus and floral fragrance made for warm weather. I have an older batch. I can't speak on any newer batches if there's any out there, but my bottle is strong. This is a one sprayer if I'm gonna be inside. If I'm going to be outside, two, maybe three sprays max. My wife's other favorite, Jake's House by Henry Rose. This is a floral aquatic fragrance. It's fresh with citrus accords, it's sweet. If I'm gonna be inside, I can easily spray two to three sprays and it won't be overwhelming. Outside, I can go five sprays easily and reapply after a few hours. Tip, when reapplying, two sprays maximum. Also keep in mind that there are fragrances made for cool weather. Don't wear cool fragrances in warm weather. Cool weather fragrances are heavy and it will choke people out and make you stink. Cool weather fragrances smell like cinnamon, vanilla, spices. Here's another tip. If you don't know if something is formulated for cool weather or warm weather, go to fragrantiga.com. The site has a wealth of information about fragrances that will help make your decision making easier. Cool weather recommendations. Darkest Night by Henry Rose. Its main accords are patchouli and vanilla. Sweet Tobacco by 1821 Man Made. Its main accords are vanilla and wine. Replica by the Fireplace by Maison Margiela. This is a woody vanilla fragrance with chestnuts. Think marshmallows by the fireplace. L'Homme Ideal à de Parfum by Guerlain. This one is sweet with cherry vanilla and almond. This one would be great for younger guys if you're trying to set yourself apart from the rest. It's fun, it's playful, but it's not too playful that you won't be taken seriously. Why do I say that? I was once a guy in my 20s. I wanted to be taken more seriously. You know, I'm not a, I wasn't a teenager anymore. I'm a developing man, I'm growing up. So treat me as such. This fragrance will help you achieve that. Its warm weather counterpart will work as well for you younger guys. I'm talking about Lome Ideal Cologne by Guerlain. As you can see, I really like this one a lot. 
This one has citrus and almond and vetiver. The sillage, the scent trail is amazing. This is the fragrance that I've walked by people and I've heard, he smells good. This is the fragrance where I've walked down the hall and into a room and people have come inside the room saying, something smells good, what is that? Next up for warm weather fragrances is Solil Diatali by Mancera. This is a citrus and woody fragrance that has gotten me lots and lots of compliments. This is a solid buy. Onto my signature scent recommendations. Tom Ford Grey Vetiver, Eau de Parfum. This one is an absolute must buy. It's great year round. I've tested it, especially in temperature controlled environments. It's great for the office, great for pairing with the soup. It has citrus and vetiver, it's woodsy and smoky. This is absolutely awesome. Another great year round fragrance, which could be your signature scent. This is one of my favorites. Cidre de Boise by Mancera. This fragrance is a woody, fruity, and citrus fragrance, and it's powdery. It's light enough for warmer weather, but heavy enough for cooler weather. Again, especially in temperature controlled environments. This is another signature scent worthy fragrance that's an absolute keeper. Now, the storage mistake that you may be making that's destroying your fragrances is this, storing them in the bathroom. Fragrances come alive. They interact with your skin and also with the environment. Don't store your fragrances in the bathroom. The temperature changes, the moisture will absolutely destroy them. Here's a tip. Avoid wasting money by doing this. Order fragrance samples online, go to the mall, go to a fragrance boutique. Try them out on your skin to see if you like them. Using the paper strip won't give you that definitive feedback, that information about how it's going to ultimately smell on you. Fragrance is mixed with your DNA. So the same fragrance may smell one way on you, but differently on someone else. Another reason to do this is to see if it'll give you a headache. Some fragrances give me headaches. Some fragrances give my wife headaches. In both instances, I don't buy them. Be a good husband, fellas. Consider your wife. Be aware that Eau de Parfum fragrances have more fragrance oils, so the scent will sit closer to the skin, it won't be as loud as the Eau de Toilette concentration, and it will last longer. The Eau de Toilette concentrations have more alcohol in them and tend to dissipate faster, so you may need to reapply more often. To avoid taking the whole bottle with you when you're out and about, order these little fragrance atomizers. I recommend these glass ones. Also get this tape tug it gently and wrap it around the threads of the bottle. This will keep your fragrances from spilling out of the atomizer. Now, why should you consider wearing a fragrance? Not only are they mood enhancing, but you make a great first impression as well, and a great lasting impression. Gentlemen, it's one thing to be dapper. It's another thing to be dapper and smell good on top of it. There are many men who will not invest in fragrances. So for those of us who do, we set ourselves apart. Also, it's a conversation starter. It's possible to spark new friendships with people who are also into fragrances. Now, this is a more, this is more of a personal thing for me, but fragrances are an art form. There is a great deal of research and precision that goes into making these compositions. I enjoy the artistry of things that are complex, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. 